Today's session, again, is about the possibilities of Android customization. And as Android is rapidly gaining popularity as the platform of choice for modern embedded systems. Android enabled custom solutions, for example, such as the Kindle Fire by Amazon, have really proven to be a game changer in the industry today. In fact, according to Amazon, Kindle Fire captured 22% of the U.S. tablet market and increased their ebook sales by 175% in 2011, which is just a phenomenal increase. Now, on your screen, you can actually look at some of those key deliverables in today's session that we're going to cover. So we're going to give you an overview of how to customize Android for embedded solutions, including selecting target device, porting, UX design, uh, customizing code base, and more. And today, we're also going to present some new and really exciting possibilities of Android customization for various different domains such as healthcare, automotive, education, hospitality, and so on. So let's go ahead and get started. So embedded systems control so many devices in common use today. They really range from portable devices such as digital watches and MP3 players to really large stationary installations like, say, ATM machines. Now, as you can see, their complexities vary on a really large scale. Now, where some systems may have real-time performance constraints that must be met for reasons such as maybe safety and usability, others allow the system hardware to be simplified to reduce costs. And as we all know, embedded systems have changed dramatically in recent years. The modern embedded systems are really largely connected, media-rich, and just highly integrated. And nearly all embedded systems include IP networking stacks and link connectivity via a combination of wired and wireless network interfaces. Now, the core feature sets often rely upon that connectivity. Now, also, Many embedded systems include graphic, graphical user interfaces with really high resolution 2D and 3D graphics, audio and video, encode and decode. And then lastly, for just a myriad number of reasons, such as power efficiency, performance, and say size, chips and chipsets for embedded systems are designed to be highly integrated. Now, this drastic change in the modern embedded system characteristics has really given rise to advanced functionality and user experience needs. Embedded Android provides just a very solid ground to realize this need. So Android, the open source mobile platform, is moving toward a broad range of embedded devices that do span multiple industries and multiple segments. So you might ask yourself, why is Android an attractive technology for just such diverse needs as medical devices and, say, automotive infotainment systems? So we're going to try and answer that and dive into the technology and business drivers of Android in embedded applications to answer that question. So on your screen now, you can see some of the key reasons why CTOs and VPs choose Android. So the first technology driver that we're going to highlight here today is the Android, Java, and Dalvik virtual machine. The programming language associated with the upper and middle layers of Android platform is based on Java. Now, Android runs on Dalvik Virtual Machine, which was specifically designed to support a diverse set of devices where those applications must be sandboxed for security, performance, and reliability. And just furthermore, it works very well with that limited processor speed and RAM. So the next driver that we're going to talk about is hardware reference platforms. The primary option 
four Android hardware reference platforms are ARM-based Android development phones. Now, hardware platforms are also available for prototyping and benchmarking for the new class of embedded Android systems, such as those tablets, automotive, and set-top set box-based initiatives for systems on chip or boards. And the next technical driver we're going to talk about for Android customization is technical frameworks. So Android offers some new and emerging technical frameworks to enable the devices. For example, some devices actually require larger screens vis-a-vis, -vis, say, a traditional smartphone or even multiple screens. Now, both Google and its partner community are really investing in those frameworks that do facilitate these application needs. So now we're going to take up NDK support, or Native Development Kit. So Native Development Kit is a tool set to embed components that make use of native C, C++ code in the Android applications. Now, NDK support was added to the standard Android software development kit, just opening up a new way to create performance and graphics-sensitive applications. So the next driver is development and debug tools. So using open source development environments and debug tools really allows an existing project to rapidly switch to Android. And Eclipse actually offers a dedicated plugin for Android, mainly the Android Development Tools, or ADT, plugin. Uh, moreover, GDB, the GNU debugger, is a really common way to debug your Android code. Now, again, just at this point, I want to reemphasize that the Android, again, is rapidly gaining popularity as that foundation platform for both smartphones and embedded devices alike. So now that we've tackled those technology drivers, let's go ahead and move on to take a look at some of the business drivers. So the first business driver that we want to take up here is licensing. Now, Android here is a really compelling choice because all its core packages are open source under those terms of the Apache 2.0 license. Now, this fact allows the usage of both code for both commercial and free open source applications. So on to that next driver. Um, Android is able to provide a comprehensive set of source code that specifically are created by the Android team that leverages existing open source projects to provide that complete and cohesive software stack. And there's actually currently more than 200 separate Git trees in the public Android repository. In fact, many um, hardware component vendors have decided to provide source code for specific drivers. OK, then comes the release cadence. Now, Android has a relatively frequent cadence for all its major releases. Uh, its heritage in the mobile world really mandates a rapid release cycle with multiple releases per year. So the advantage here is that with so many new features being added frequently, you may have less to build by yourself. So the next driver we're going to talk about is ecosystem support. Virtually all major embedded silicon providers have created and do actively maintain an Android base port. There is a large developer community associated with Android driving not only that application layer content, but also the Android middleware components. And this is, of course, critically important for that continued evolution of Android. So the next driver is documentation and training. So the Android community really does offer a wide variety of valuable instruction content, videos, and lots of extensive blogs. And this really ensures that there is 
just a rich community working and continuously innovating. So now on your screen, you can actually see some of the cutting edge advantages of using Android for your embedded solution. And the first main advantage that you need to know that Android offers is its well-accepted and just recognized UX. Android's domination in the mobile world is here to stay. And really, this is largely because of that wide acceptance of the user experience possible on this platform. Now, Android UX designs such as Fogfeel UX, HTC Sense, and a lot of others have significantly raised the UX standards. So the next advantage of using Android we're going to talk about is the supply chain commoditization. So since Android is an open source platform with just a wide support from the OEM community, its favorable licensing terms enable just hassle-free commoditization of Android device. Now, Android also enables just easy integration with other devices through standard connectivity options such as Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, USB, etc. Okay, so having gone through some of those technology and business drivers of Android customization, as well as some of those various benefits, we would really like to know if and when you are planning to leverage Android customization for your embedded applications. So you can actually see a poll running now on the right side of your screen, and we would love to know your input. Now, your options are you have no plans for Android customization, or you're actually planning for Android customization, do you need help in Android customization, or do you already have a solution strategy in place? So you have about 30 seconds to answer that poll. Okay, we are gathering results, and it looks like we have them. And it seems as though about 35% of you chose option two, which is that you are planning for Android customization. And about 25% of you chose option three that said you do need help in Android customization. Now, again, thank you for participating in that poll. And I just want to quickly remind you that you can actually send in your questions if you do have questions about what we're talking about today using that chat panel on the right. And we will, in fact, take them up at the Q&A session at the end of our presentation today. Okay, so now let's move on and just give you an overview of how you can actually customize Android. So the first step to customization is to determine your system use cases. So because of the increasing complexity of modern embedded systems, it demands a process that's tailored to the needs of the stakeholders involved in the development. So use cases and state charts are commonly used as specification techniques in many projects. So let's just take a moment here and understand this process just a little bit better. So typically, we start by identifying the purpose of the system. So this just includes identification of the main services that would be offered and its core functionalities. Now, the next step is use case analysis, which involves identifying the relevant users and the core services that they would require. Use cases are then created that focus on the functions demanded in context of the specific user. So the next and very important step is identifying the hardware you're going to use for your target system. And again, depending on the use cases, we identify which hardware and Android OS version is really best suited to the current and future feature needs. Now, we also identify which other optional accessories may be required in the hardware, again, specific to your needs. Now, as we know, those hardware requirements vary for different Android operating system versions. Now, keep in mind there are certain minimum hardware requirements for building Android devices up to version 2.3. For example, 
for instance, that minimum screen resolution is QVGA or 240 by 320 pixels touchscreen and support for virtual keyboard. Other requirements include a USB connection and a minimum of 92 MB of RAM, in addition to 150 MB per storage. Now, the hardware really should be capable of wireless high-speed data standard supporting 200 kbps minimum. Now, for Android 4.0, also known as Ice Cream Sandwich, or ICS, that minimum memory requirement is 340 MB for the kernel and user space. Now, another 340 MB should really be dedicated to hardware components such as radio, video, et cetera, that are, that are not under the direct control of the kernel. Now, again, there also may be a need of supporting optional hardware depending on the system requirements. For example, say if we want to use the device as a terminal at some store, we may actually want to use the camera for scanning the barcode or maybe even NFC support for processing the payments. Now, other commonly chosen optional hardware includes accelerometer, GPS receiver, and Bluetooth. Now, an average embedded device should have about 1 gigahertz of processor with a minimum of 512 MB of RAM to support all the existing Android OS versions. Now, you have to be careful here because selecting the device with the minimum hardware support may sound economical to start with, but really may result in performance and extensibility issues later on. Therefore, we have to recommend a balance between your current need and any future needs. I want to just take a moment now and ask Pooja to explain some of the subsequent steps of this Android customization to you. Over to you, Pooja. Thanks, Lisa. So the next step we will take up is to design the UX for the target Android-enabled system as per the identified scope. Porting of the required Android version on the chosen hardware can be done in parallel. Let us first understand some principles of designing the UX. The terminals targeted for a specific business function should be addressed with a well thought of interface design. It must be based on the target user's behavior and study. In fact, interfaces should be designed for the user and should be simple with expected responses against each interaction. Another important aspect is to address motor load and intellectual load by designing the UX. You should work with the interaction patterns and follow consistent presentation of information. The use of hard key interactions is the added benefit in Android devices and you should utilize this capability in a proper and consistent way. Also, use of visual transitions is a great way to give a breather to the users while, while switching the context and should be used within the ecosystem of interface design. Delivering the brand visual value of an application or a business is the key to enjoy brand mileage. It can be handled right from the splash screen and boot animation to achieve rich UI. Moreover, Android has a well-defined way to address various screen sizes and resolutions. It is crucial to manage crisp graphic quality across wide form factors of Android-driven terminals. With Android, you have a wide canvas to play upon when it comes to interface design. I would like to share with our audience that Impetus has carved specific tools and strategies based on its vast experience in designing the UX for a variety of solutions. We are soon planning a webinar where we will share the recommended practices of Android-enabled custom systems UX design. We will keep you posted. 
I will now explain what all entails in porting Android. So, basically, this is a process to port Android OS to a new device. Porting may also be required for upgrading Android version for your existing and enabled system. Broadly speaking, porting involves kernel and device drivers in cooperation as per the chosen Android version and target hardware. Let me elaborate on kernel identification. Kernel is the heart of any operating system. It is specific to the underlying board used in the target hardware. We can use the pre-built kernel or compile our own from the source code. Some commonly used Android kernels include Goldfish, which is used in the Android emulator, MSM, which is used for Qualcomm MSM chipsets and used in devices such as ADP1, ADP2, and Nexus1. Samsung kernel is used for Samsung Hummingbird chipsets for devices such as Nexus S. And lastly, Tegra is used for NVIDIA Tegra chipsets for devices such as Zoom and Nexus 7. After kernel identification, the next step is to incorporate device drivers for various hardware components. In case of Android version upgrade, we usually extract these drivers from the device itself. For new hardware, OEMs provide the drivers separately from the hardware. Some core drivers that are required for an Android-enabled system include the radio layer interface, audio, camera, Wi-Fi, then again Bluetooth display driver. The radio layer interface driver is required to support the GSM based radios. Audio driver is required to support the audio, camera driver for camera, and similarly others. Once done with the kernel and device driver incorporation, next we need to integrate them in the Android open source build system and compile it for the new target device. Setting up the build system for a new device requires introducing it in the build system. If it's not already there, and then placing the kernel and device driver in the respective device folder hierarchy and making relevant entries in the build scripts. Once done with the build, you must flash the new images on to the target device to ensure that the Android build works on it. After getting Android ported for your chosen hardware, the next step is to customize Android as per the target system functionality and the target UX. Some common customizations required for every Android-enabled solution include Boot Splash, Boot Animation, Lock, and Launcher. The process for customizing Boot Splash and Animation is device-dependent. Custom audio files can be configured for playing while the boot animation runs. AOSP supports gesture-based, pattern-based, and pin-based lock screens by default. The status bar at the top of the screen displays various system notifications. For example, battery status, network status, incoming mails, messages, etc. We can control and customize the status bar too by making changes in the Android framework code. Similar to the launcher app, other pre-built apps such as camera, phone, email, browser, etc. can also be customized as per your system needs. The apps which are not required can then be removed to optimize the OS footprint. I will now take up the last step of Android customization, which is testing. Now, this would include testing of the system build with respect to its core features and functionality. Additionally, we need to test the whole hardware and OS running on the device. A special command mode testing tool, Android Compatibility Test Suite, CTS, makes it easy for mobile device manufacturers to develop compatible Android devices. Great. 
Thanks, Pooja. That was great. Um, so, so far, we've been able to see why Android is the preferred platform, really, for your embedded system, and how to create an Android-enabled system. And again, I just want to share with you that coming up, we are going to be having a webinar which will discuss these customization steps in a lot further detail, as well as share with you some of the recommended practices. And we will be sure to keep you posted on that. But again, once again, I just want to invite you that if you have any questions on what we're talking about today, please feel free to just send those questions and queries at that chat window. And again, our expert Pooja will take them up at the end. Okay, so now let's dive into a few of some really thought-provoking case studies in some different verticals. So in this next section, we're going to highlight how the Android-enabled custom solutions can take the user experience or business model and SLAs to the next level for you. Okay, so we're going to start with some exciting possibilities that Android customization can bring to the healthcare industry. So we're first going to consider a patient monitoring dedicated terminal used by the paramedical staff. So this terminal is intended to fulfill the need of tracking the patient's medication and schedule may, and also collaborate effectively to serve patients in just a better and more timely manner. Okay, so as you can see on your screen, here is the Android-enabled patient monitoring terminal. So this terminal actually enables the staff to manage the patient's effectively by keeping track of all their medication schedules as well as diagnostics readings and tracking. Now also, various diagnostics, say like blood pressure, sugar level, etc., are being measured using Bluetooth-enabled medical devices for which Android has built-in support for. So this terminal that you're looking at actually enables accurate timestamp readings being saved in the patient record, along with the tracking of which staff, personnel keyed in the details, and also in case of an emergency, the staff does have an option to call the doctor using a special hard key on the terminal. Now, another great feature is that nursing staff is also able to coordinate for various service bookings like sonography and accepting through um, the booking option they actually have the ability to communicate with other entities in this complete ecosystem like doctors, blood banks, medical stores through the messaging option. And last, there's a feedback feature that actually helps the patients give ratings and comments for any aspect of the, hosp the hospital services that they encounter. Now, this is just a glimpse of the impact such dedicated solutions can really have on your business model to get a big leap in your competitive edge. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at another example, and this time it's of a car's in-vehicle infotainment system, again, powered by Android. So this solution we're going to talk about supports two different modes, my car mode, which is the primary interface for the driver, and then also My Apps mode, which is a repository of his preferred applications. Now, this system is also going to enable the user to leverage a converged application experience, again, across all his devices seamlessly. Okay, so on your screen now, you can actually see the visualization of this proposed in-vehicle infotainment system, which provides one-tap switching between those two modes, the My Car and My Apps mode. So My Car mode provides various points of time information for the drivers that are related to the current vehicle updates and statistics. Now, these include information such as say, fuel level, or maybe a suspected breakdown. DriveMate can proactively monitor the automobile health and just seamlessly coordinate the daily schedule of the driver. 
Now, on the other hand, the My Apps mode allows the driver to really drill down into vehicle-related and general applications. So this IVI system also ensures, again, a converged app experience across all the user devices. And let's take a look now on how we can achieve this. Okay, so the Android-enabled in-vehicle infotainment solution can really be uniquely empowered for seamless synchronization with the user's home smart TV, smartphone, tablet, and laptop. So applications such as Trip Planner that you can see on your screen can be developed to actually offer a converged experience to the end user across, again, all his smart devices. And a private cloud acting as the user data hub helps to have a point of time updated data on all the devices. Okay, so now let's move on and pick up the education sector and let's analyze how Android-enabled custom solutions can really change the future of this industry. So, one of those key areas where tablet PCs are absolutely expected to make a big impact in the coming de decade is school education. But the question really is how can a dedicated student tablet facilitate online virtual classrooms or really even help students plan and manage their schedules? Okay, so here is the Android-based study companion tablet, which is able to maintain, oh, there you see it, maintain all the academics material online with everyday notes and also a provision of taking sample test papers. Now this provides utilities such as anytime, anywhere access to other reference ebooks and actually an online library. Now, in addition, collaboration tools like Messenger and blogs are really going to help him to interact and share knowledge with all his peers and teachers on the go. So that was education, and now we're going to take a look at the impact Android-enabled solutions can make in the retail sector. So whether you're checking in at the airport, checking out at the grocery store, already point-of-service systems are everywhere. Now, we're going to take a look at a self-service kiosk solution to be designed to help the customers actually pay their bills using their mobile wallets. This is going to enable the store owner to push various special offers and particular discounts using rich 2D and 3D graphics and animation on those kiosks. So the Android-enabled self-service kiosk can generate seamlessly with the desk-mounted barcode scanner and help customers scan items and also pay using the NFC payment on his mobile wallet. Now, the kiosk can then track the customer's purchases and then propose maybe other smart options in the same category. Now, during those off-peak hours when, say, the system is just not being used, that same kiosk can work as an advanced advertising board that also can help the customers passing by check out maybe the latest offers or the latest discounts. So let's now take a look at another really exciting example and understand applicability of Android-based custom systems in the context of home monitoring. So managed home automation and security services are now really providing a new option for homeowners who do wish to monitor their homes remotely. So we're going to actually consider a modern home monitoring terminal that coordinates with the live surveillance system in the home and facilitates managing other home appliances remotely. This really proactively just keeps track of the appliance health status and its maintenance. So again, let's take a look at how Android-enabled home monitoring solutions uniquely serves to attain all these features. So again, you can see the terminal on the slide here, and this actually has a provision to manage appliances together 
with also proactively keeping track of the appliance health and coordinating with other pre-configured service center in case of any fault. Uh, while the user is also able to view the appliances under management at a glance and then can track the actions that are taken for them. It also coordinates just seamlessly with other supported appliances using multiple connectivity options like, say, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, infrared, or maybe X10 commands. Okay, so now let's quickly move on and explore some really innovative possibilities for the hospitality domain with those Android-enabled custom solutions. So what does custom hospitality solutions really mean to a hotel's bottom line? Well, we're going to consider a custom service terminal provided in each of the hotel rooms. Now, this very custom solution should really help customers manage room and service preferences. And then the customer should be able to manage power, maybe order food, track delivery status, and even pay bills using the custom hotel tablet. So you can see it on your screen now, and the user has to log on to the terminal upon check-in, and then the system then loads all his preferences and choice patterns as per his past stay history. So the, the terminal is continuously learning and customizing that user experience across his stay. Now, on that bottom bar, he has just one tap access to his profile and also access to all the hotel services, including cab booking, cuisine, maybe even trip planning, reminders, and many other options. Now, additionally, the hotel benefits from central power management and proximity sensor-based proactive power saver features in such terminals which are installed in each of the rooms and all the corridors. Okay, so now it's time to open the floor for any questions you may have. And again, please feel free to send us questions using that chat panel on the right side of your screen. Now, before we actually field all those questions, I just want to take a moment to share what Impetus can do for you. So Impetus really has special expertise in working on all these Android open source project customizations. So really, whether it's making Android work on a new device or maybe even upgrading the old Android terminal to a newer Android version, Impetus really excels in this area. Now, our mature process that helps achieve the target solution not only in the desired timelines, but also in a very cost-effective way for you. We really have some rapid customization strategies that help us port the device and then customize the terminal with custom boot animation, lock, launcher, and some other pre-built apps effectively while really maintaining a high quality. And complementary to all of this is really our rich experience in working on Android application development. We have rapid application development frameworks like, like M Accelerate and Immobilizer that really allow us to help build cost-effective yet multi-platform solutions with some sound application architecture that is able to allow for future extensibility and maintainability of your Android application. Now again, M Automate, which is a mobile test automation framework and provides a robust platform for record once and executes on multiple devices in parallel can be used for test automation of your custom solution. Now, our distinguished U.S. design capabilities have given a really unique edge to our client projects and continue to do so. We design for all types of form factors, and we also work on uniform and converged experience of an app's UX on multiple devices. And lastly, I just want to share that Impetus does have the experience in working on a variety of domains and serves as a core technology and R&D partner for many Fortune 500 co companies. 
Okay, so now it's time to field some of those questions that you sent in during this webinar. And all the questions that we receive, we're going to ask to Pooja, our expert. Okay, so it looks like the first question that someone has for Pooja uh, asks, what licensing intricacies are involved when customizing Android for custom solutions? Pooja, what do you think? Yeah. Uh, I think there are two parts to Android. Uh, one is Android compatible Linux kernel, and the other part is AOSP release. Even though it is modified to run the AOSP, the Linux kernel continues to be subject to the GNU license, that is GPL version 2 license, that it has always been under. And so, if uh, you are not allowed to distribute any modifications, you make to the kernel under any other license other than GPL. So, however, applications that run on top of the kernel are not considered derived works. Hence, you are free to create applications that run on top of the Linux kernel and distribute them under any license type. Okay, great question. It uh, looks like somebody else has asked, can I modify a standard Android phone and then convert it into data collection utility in which I would require the support of just GSM and camera? What do you think about that? Hey, sure. Uh, putting Android on an embedded device is a complex task involving an intricate understanding of its internals and a clever mix of modifications to AOSP and kernel on which it runs. So uh, putting it in simple words, this particular problem would involve creating the specific Android OS version build, ported for your desired phone with OEM specific kernel and device drivers embedded to support GSM and camera features. Next step would be adding of the data collection utility app in the build. And finally, the unused applications and features that are part of the standard USB should be removed to achieve your customized solution. Okay. We have a third question here, and someone would like to know, is there any brand specific limitation or any Android phone that can be reflashed with custom image of Android? Who just? Okay. Uh, as discussed with you, uh, you will need OEM specific kernel and hardware components, uh, specific device drivers in order to get, uh, for getting your custom AOSP build working on your specific OEM phone. Uh, now, there is an option of using Android developer phones for which complete builds are available on AOSP repository. And finally, in order to get your custom ROM flashed onto your target device, you need to root your device. Okay. Um, we have another question here that asks, do I need to take OEM permission in order to customize Android for a particular device in bulk? What do you think? Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, we do not need uh, OEM permission for the same. However, uh, you would need kernel and device drivers for that device in order to create a custom ROM for the same. And of course, you would need device uh, to be rooted for flashing on your custom ROM onto it. Okay, great questions here. Uh, we have another one that came in, and this one asks, what makes Android a preferred platform for me as an embedded system vendor? Pooja? Uh, all right. I um, think there are a lot of characteristics that we discussed as part of the webinar. And uh, some of the most highlighted ones I would like to reiterate are Android's consistent and forward compatible APIs which makes sure that your custom apps that you develop for the embedded systems uh, continue working in, on future Android ver versions. And secondly, because Android is open source and as a benefit of its architecture, a lot of its components can be replaced outright. 
For instance, um, if you don't like the default app launcher, you can write your own. And another benefit that I would like to highlight over here is Android's openness and its architecture. Uh, is that adding support for additional features and hardware is relatively straightforward. So you just need to emulate what the platform is doing for other hardware or features of the same type. So for instance, um, you can add support for custom hardware to the HAL by adding a handful of files only. Thanks, Pooja. Um, unfortunately, that's all the time we have right now for questions. Um, again, some of the questions came in, and we will be addressing those in a follow-up email for all of you a little bit later. Again, thank you all so much for joining us today, and we really hope that this discussion was a learning experience for everybody and will really be able to assist you in your Android customization efforts. Again, if you have any further questions, please feel free to email us at inquiry at impetus.com, or you can visit our website at www.impetus.com. Before we go, we just want to share with you that we will be exhibiting at the upcoming Star West show from September 30th to October 5th, and feel free to write to us if you wish to meet us there. Once again, thank you so much for joining us in this session today. Goodbye.